Hello, my name is Arlen McFarlane and I'm the Curious Gardener and today I'm here with Simone Rudge. Simone, why don't you tell me a little bit about this uh, structure that we're standing in front of? So this is the Four Season Experimental Greenhouse. It was built by a group of students in the fall of 2011 and we started growing in it with students in January 2012. So there's two layers of vacuum insulated panels sandwiched inside the shutters for this greenhouse. What do these shutters do and when do you use them? In the summer we've got so much daylight um, that we do occasionally close them just to keep it cool in the greenhouse. In the winter though because we already are lighting the greenhouse we can close them when it's really cold out to just, just to conserve heat because we grow through all four seasons it's got a three layer polycarbonate glazing there's little triangle shapes in there that gives you a little bit more uh, our value and uh, it's a little bit thicker than your home greenhouse usually would have this greenhouse has an arctic entry so that in the winter, when we come in, we can leave our coats and boots and they don't get too wet. It also helps to conserve heat. The first thing that catches my eyes that's different from most greenhouses is all these banks of lights. Plants need at least 10 hours of daylight in order to grow. They, they can survive, they can hold steady um, at less light than that, but they can't actually produce new leaves. So in the Yukon, that means from November 24th to February 4th, there's no growing happening without additional lighting. So we tried out two different systems. Uh, these are a nine watt LED. This is kind of new in the greenhousing world. Slightly more conventional. These are also LED lights, but designed for the greenhouse industry and they're 150 watt LEDs. One of the most important features of this greenhouse is heat storage. The issue is we've got such big fluctuations between how hot it gets when the sun is shining and how cool it gets at night here. And so if we can store some of that heat during the day to use at night, that'll make your greenhouse much more efficient. And that's what some of this is about. Can you tell me about this? Hot air rises, and so the hottest air in the greenhouse is gonna be at the peak. And so what we've built is a perforated channel for that hot air to collect in. And then we have a fan that draws that hot air, pushes it down under the beds where we have storage device. So under here in this neat little compartment, there's water. This side is mostly plastic bottles. Um, all of the stud spaces within the beds we filled with cans of water. Uh, this side has all cans. We wanted to compare whether the heat transferred better through the plastic or through the cans, and it actually doesn't make any difference. Now when I pick up this can, it's not cold, which you would expect it to be. And it's absorbing heat from the air that's being forced down. Where does it exit? So we've got a couple of floor vents, regular floor vents on the other end of the bed, and that's where the air exits. So it oh. goes under the bed, drops off its excess heat, comes up as cool air, which provides a little bit of ventilation underneath the canopy of the plants as well. We have barrels for watering, um, and it was quite remarkable, actually, when we put the barrels in and filled them with water, that smoothing out of the curve, right, between the peak of the hot middle of the day and the cool middle of the night, also dramatically changed once we put our water inside the building. So a greenhouse is a lot about trying to even out the temperature so it's not too hot in the day and not too cold at night. Absolutely, that is the key. Solar noon for us is 2 p.m. in the Yukon. And so at solar noon, if you put a stake in the ground and see where its shadow lies, put a second stake in that shadow you will have a perfect north-south solar, north-south line that you can use to orient your greenhouse. 